Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's so good to see everyone here this morning. Welcome and welcome to our friends online. Take a moment to gather your communion elements as we always offer the Lord's Supper during the service. And we would like for you online and at home to join us at that moment. So a little something to eat, a little something to drink, and you can partake with us at that point in our service. A few announcements before we begin our service. You can see either in the bulletin or on the PowerPoint. We continue our food bank donations. The bins are in the narthex. You know what to do, right? Gather your non-breakable, non-glass items. Bring them in, be generous, and put them in the narthex so we could offer those donations to the Richland Food Bank. And we have the breakfast brunch is starting up again. I know this is a fun tradition for many. So this Thursday, the 15th, we will gather at the Denny's, Richland Denny's. That's on George Washington Parkway, correct? Yes. I was going to say GW Parkway, but that's not what we call it here. Um, so 7.30 AM. I think that was a compromise to get Pastor Miriam there, right? <laughs> OK, 7.30, get there early. <laughs> Place your, your uh, order for your breakfast or whatever you eat in the morning, and we'll gather and have some fun time. So please, all those that would like to, please join us on Thursday. A few other announcements. Board meeting is coming up, and this week we have the Stewardship Committee meeting. So if you have any questions about those, please see. Um, we have John Lawson right there, or if you have board reports, please turn those in to Anna and she is putting together the packet for the board meeting. A few other announcements we have, of course, always prayer concerns. Those are printed in your bulletin as well as on the PowerPoint. We continue to pray for those names that are on the bulletin. And we especially at this time lift up prayers for campers. Uh, the Northern Lights region, which we are a part of, uh, are starting up again with their outdoor camp activities. And although we don't have anyone going to camp from this church. We lift up all campers and all the counselors and those that are directing the camps. We lift them up in prayer so that they may stay well and healthy as they enjoy the great outdoors. And it's always a fun time. And of course, prayers for those who are traveling. We miss you. We can't wait to have you back, but you know that you can watch us online. <laughs> can't get away now. Mm -hmm. Friends, it's always wonderful to gather once more to worship the Lord, because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship the Lord. Come to praise God for all of life that is ordered and balanced. Our God also made all that enables right relationships between God and creation. Transforming God through your creative processes grounded in God's love, you overcame the powers of chaos and darkness, bringing light and joy to your creation. Your creation is good and beautiful, and in harmony with itself, which calls us to also be one with you in love. Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs>
let us turn our hearts and our minds to God as we enter into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Center us now, O God, on your presence in this place. As we lift up our hearts' desires, our souls' deep needs, our hungers, our fears, and our failures. As we have often failed to be obedient to your will in our lives as individual disciples and as a church, we pray that you will forgive us and enliven us to be and to do the gospel of Christ. Open us to your spirit's urgings and awaken us to live faithfully as your people in a changing and often hurting world. Lord of justice and mercy, we come to you this day seeking your healing and your reconciling love. We pray for those around us who need your care, and we ask that you would make us your instruments of healing, instruments of peace and redemption. We pray especially for those that we have named to you this day, and those that we lift to you in the silence of our hearts at this moment. Merciful God, help us to be open to your word. Help us to be open to your presence and your compassion. Clear our hearts of those things which block your will. Keep us focused on your enabling power so that we, having been healed already, may more fully serve you. And as we worship this morning, O oh God, we pray that your spirit will be our strength. Your word will be our guide. Your love will be our comfort, and your promises will be our hope. We gather now to praise you, O God, in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is coming from Psalms 85. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquities of your people. You pardoned all their sins. You withdrew all your wrath and you turned your hot, you turned from your hot anger. Restore us again. O God of our salvation, and put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you float on your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again so that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in your land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet righteousness and peace, will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Hear the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Just this last week, I attempted to log into our church email. <laughs> yes, the word is attempted. We are in between secretaries, so I am checking email. You see, we've been having some trouble sending and receiving emails, and 
I thought it would be a good time to figure out what the problem was <laughs> before we hired the new secretary. So with the help of my husband, actually it was all him, not me, <laughs> we proceeded to figure things out. Hours later, I'm happy to report that we were successful. Our system is not flawless, and it's actually quite complicated. We have Microsoft Outlook, and it needs to talk to our webmail hosting server, and somehow through the internet magic, uh, they are now talking to each other once more. So what was the problem, you ask? I'm not sure. <laughs> But part of it was not using that correct login information. That is the correct username and the correct password combination. We had all the answers, all of them, but we just needed to figure out the, the way that they work together. We just needed to take a moment and figure out the problem and how they fit together. So as I read Psalm 85, I was thinking about our email issues. And this is where you ask yourself, where is Pastor Miriam going with this? <laughs> but as I read Psalm 85, it occurred to me that we have all the answers. We have all the puzzle pieces. We have all the passwords. And what are those you are asking yourself at this moment? Well, here are the past words from Psalm 85. Steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace. These passwords are not our office passwords, so I'm not giving away any <laughs> secrets. Those words, think of them as our life passwords, if you will. We have the words that we need to live a life of integrity, a life of hope, a life of restoration and renewal. And if you're still wondering what is Pastor Miriam referring to, let's look a little bit closer at today's scripture, Psalm 85, to understand how these words fit together. Psalms come in different flavors, if you will. We have some praise psalms, some thanksgiving psalms. Some of the psalms depict trust in God, such as Psalm 23, and, and others speak of lament. Some were originally meant to be used in worship, and some were more personal. Psalm 85 is a communal prayer of lament. In other words, it was meant to be used in worship, in community. It was a time of lament. It's not a long psalm. It's just 13 verses. And it can be divided into three sections. So if you want to later take a moment, go to your Bible and look at those three sections. Or you could read in your bulletin. In the first section, the first three verses, the psalmist looks back with thanksgiving at Israel's deliverance. From exile. It's a new day. Now many biblical scholars think that this psalm was composed in that post-exilic period of Israel. That's the first section. The middle section, verses 4 and through 7, is a plea for restoration. That's where all those questions were. And the final section, verses 8 through 13, is a message of assurance. The psalmist is now assured that what God has done before in the past, God will do once more. And it's this last section that contains those past words that I mentioned earlier. Steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace. <coughs> Shalom. These four words are hopeful words offered by the psalmist, and they speak of hope for the present and for the future. And together they offer this roadmap. They offer a, a roadmap to God's path to restoration for that community. Now let's look at the word restoration a moment. 
The word restoration implies that something was once broken and is now brought back. Maybe to its former condition, maybe even better. Restoration implies a return to wholeness. It implies a process that results in something becoming new or almost new once more. There's a Japanese art form that's called Kintsuji. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Kintsuji, maybe. And this word means literally joined together with gold. This Japanese tradition dates back to around the 15th century. And it is a form of art that uses a resin mixed with gold flakes to repair a broken vessel. The cracked bowl, imagine a cracked bowl. The cracked bowl, using, when you use this art form, is restored, not flawlessly. Not to look as it never broke, <laughs> but by highlighting the crack as part of the repair. The crack is now even more visible, but is made more beautiful because it is gold. And this is done very artfully. See, the intent is not to hide the flaw, but to embrace the brokenness. And when finished, that repaired bowl is now more valuable than it was before it broke. The psalmist is, in a way, embracing the brokenness of his condition, the experience of exile, the experience of trauma, the experience of alienation and devastation for ancient Israel is being embraced. Through this psalm of lament, the community is trying to make sense of their experience. Have you done that in your life sometime and looked back and said, what did that mean? How did I get through that experience of trauma, devastation, alienation, that difficult period? And for the psalmist, the question is, how does the community embrace such a devastating experience? We ask those questions ourselves. How do we embrace a devastating experience, such as the pandemic, such as the terrible accident in the condo that fell in Florida, in Miami Beach? How can restoration happen to a community that is trying to understand what is wrong? So we turn to the psalm, we turn to the psalmist because he has some insight. First of all, the community gives thanks for the past. We see this in the first verses of the psalm. God was faithful then, and God will be faithful once more. So we begin with thanksgiving. We begin with acknowledgement that God is in our midst, and that God is working restoration in our own lives. That's the first insight. The second insight, the community embraces lament. This is a psalm of lament. And nearly one-third of the 150 psalms, nearly one-third of them are psalms of lament, which tells you a little bit about our human condition, doesn't it? See, a psalm of lament is a way of speaking out loud the experience of grief, the experience of disorientation that comes with grief. You know, there is much to lament in the world. I don't need to tell you that. In our personal lives, also in our communal lives. As one of my professors in seminary explained, a lament can be called a legitimate complaint in faith to God. And this legitimate complaint in faith to God contributes to our healing and our wholeness. So friends, go ahead and grieve. Go ahead and vent. Go ahead and lament. I'm not saying stay there, but sometimes I don't think we do enough of that. And that is what the psalmist is modeling for us. That's what 
the psalmist does. Listen to his questions. Will you be angry at us forever? Will you not revive us again, O oh God? The psalmist is modeling for us something that, that we hesitate to do, and that is quarrel with God, wrestle with God. You know, the Bible is full of examples of this. If you go through back to the stories, you can see that there is there are plenty of examples of, of talking back to God and saying why. But the Psalms are just great examples of that. And let me assure you, God can handle our anger and our questions. Let me say that again. It's okay to vent. God can handle our anger. God can handle our questions. So we can follow the psalmist's example. And at the very least, when you talk back to God, you are acknowledging God. And God wants a relationship with you. At the very least, you're acknowledging that there is brokenness in your life, in our lives, and in our community. So go ahead. Vent. That's the second insight. And the last insight from the psalmist. The psalmist helps us find the path to restoration. So you see, you don't stay in that lament period. You start with Thanksgiving. You go to lament, but don't stay there. You can go back and visit it, but don't stay there. The psalmist now finds, helps us find a path to restoration. But not just any path. This is God's path to restoration. Listen to the words of the psalm. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. In these words, we have a picture of what God's restoration looks like. This is what salvation for a troubled world looks like. It looks like this. It looks like steadfast love meeting faithfulness and righteousness and peace leaning in for a big kiss. Mwah. <laughs> These words, meeting and kissing, springing up and looking down, illustrate a world in harmony where all the parts work together. I know it sounds like a Coca-Cola commercial. <laughs> I'd like to teach the world to sing in her. Okay, I'm that old. But yes, all the parts together working in harmony. All the parts working together. It's kind of like the Wi-Fi login I spoke of earlier. When all the parts are there, all the answers are there, you just got to make them work at the right place. Well, we have all the past work. And while this last section speaks of God's character and, and God's activity in our world, there's nothing that says that we just have to sit back and, and just let God do what God needs to do to set things right. We acknowledge the past, we acknowledge the brokenness in our world and in our own lives, and we can be thankful that God is with us and, and still with us, acting in our lives. We can lament and grieve and confess, but we don't need to stop there. And while all that, God gives us all that, and God gives us so much that we don't merit. And what we receive from God is not based on our accomplishments. But we don't just sit back while the world falls apart under the strain of all that is wrong. We don't just wait for God to fix it all. We can be part of the solution. We can begin by looking at the places in our own lives that are needing restoration. We can begin by looking at ourselves. Where do we need re restoration? Where, where are the broken parts that can be brought to wholeness? So we, we begin with working on ourselves, and then, and then we turn outward. And we work on our communities. Where are the places that are broken? 
What are the systems that are broken? Where are the people that are broken that we can help? It's a process. The psalmist ends with these words. The Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increase. Yes, the Lord will give us what we need. The Lord will give us what is good. And our land will yield its increase. You know, that's kind of an agricultural, you think of, of grass growing or plants or fruits, vegetables. But you could also think of it as yielding our increase in just human capability in, in schools and the way that we reach out to those that don't have, those systems will also yield an increase. God will once more bring restoration, revival, renewal. The Lord will give and we receive with gratitude, but it's up to us to recognize that gift of restoration when offered. It's up to us to use God's gift of steadfast love and faithfulness and righteousness and peace. And because God's shalom, God's peace has been promised to us, we can turn our lament into joy. For God is a generous God. During the next few weeks, I'll be preaching on these life passwords. Oh, open their biblical meaning. I'll talk about how we experience those words and what they mean for us. So remember those words, steadfast love, faithfulness, righteousness, and peace. And remember, we have all the passwords. We have all that we need for renewal and restoration. So friends, power up your computer, turn on your smartphones, log in, and connect with God. Amen.
for the important work in this community and around the world. Share generously as God has shared with each of you. Let us pray. Generous God, accept our gifts. Gifts of our lives, our souls, and our treasures. Multiply and bless these gifts and consecrate them. Use them as you use us to the fulfilling of your purposes for creation. That we might give glory to you, not only in the hearing, but in the doing of your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. the 
the darkness we persist in pursuing, like lemmings to the cliff of destruction. The status quo diffuses people and covets things. It ignores the path of all that you showed us. Open our eyes to your still more excellent way of love. Stir in us the steadfast love, faithfulness, and peace, and trust you lived in communion with our parents in heaven. Reveal your holy self again to us in this bread and this cup. Be with us now and evermore. children have come before you in love and joy. We have found the strength and the wisdom of your spirit at this your table. Guide us by that same spirit, O God, as we go forth from this place, that we may truly live as your children in peace. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
about this in the next few weeks. When you see something happening that reminds you of these words,